Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 28 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. I apologize, it's been a long time since the last episode, but we're so close to having a finished game that I'm just going to finish off this series. So today we're going to implement power-ups. Now a power-up is just going to scroll down the screen like an enemy or a meteor, and when the player collects it, it'll give them some power. Currently when the player gets damaged, we apply this shield around the player for like 2 seconds, that way they can't get hit while the shield is applied. Well, the power-up, the shield power-up, is just going to apply that same shield for like 5 or 6 seconds, that way the player can't get damaged for quite a while. Now, we already have part of this done because the player already supports having a shield, if you recall. In fact, it's these two lines in the damage function of the player script that actually applies the shield. We're going to separate this out into its own function, that way we can apply a shield from anywhere in our code. Let's create a function called apply shield in the player script, that'll take in a parameter called time, which will be the amount of time in seconds that we want to apply the shield for. And to apply the shield, it's just these two lines right here. So we're just going to cut those out of the damage function and paste them into apply shield instead. So we just start the invincibility timer for, instead of damage invincibility time, whatever time we pass in as the parameter. And we set the shield sprite visibility equal to true. And where that code used to be in the damage function, we will just call apply shield instead, passing in damage invincibility time, which is like, I don't know, two seconds or something. There. So we've changed absolutely nothing, we just refactored out some code. And of course, when the invincibility timer stops, that's when we set shield sprite visible equal to false. Okay, now it's important to note that if you call apply shield like twice in a row, like if somewhere in the code we did apply shield, three and apply shield five, it's important to note that it's the last call that will restart the invincibility timer. So in this case, this would really just apply the shield for five seconds. Of course, if you want a different behavior than that, you can of course code it as such, but this will be plenty for our case. Now let's actually create the power up. Similar to how we have a base class for any entity, uh, sorry, for any enemy, we're going to create a new scene to be the base class for any power-up, because we're going to have multiple of them in our game. Let's create a new scene, and we're going to change the root node to be an area 2D, because we need to be able to, de to detect when the player collects the power-up. And we're going to go ahead and rename this to power-up, and we're going to save this in a new folder called power-ups. There we go. And this is just going to be the base class for every power-up in our game. Of course, every power-up needs a sprite, so let's add a sprite node to the power-up. None of this is new, by the way. This is all very similar to how we created the enemy base class, so I'm just going to kind of go through this quickly. Uh, if you're using the same assets as I am, in the textures folder, there is the pickupsheet.png image, which we can drag into the texture field of our sprite, and that contains three different power-up images. Now, this is the base class, so it doesn't matter which one we choose. But let's go ahead and just set it to the shield icon for now. To do that, of course, since we only want to see part of the sprite, we need to enable the region for the sprite. And if we go down to texture region at the bottom, here we can select what part of the image we want to see. We could use grid snap, but I'm just going to eyeball it by dragging a rectangle around or a square around the shield icon. So now we see the shield icon. It also happens to be that these icons are like four times larger than the player ship in our game, so we also have to make this smaller, at least for me. So I'm going to go to the transform property of the sprite, and we're just going to make the sprite 25% of its original size. That way it's much smaller. Okay, there we go. Next, you'll see we have a warning on Area 2D, and it means, of course, we need to add a collision shape, because the Area 2D needs to define an area. Let's add a collision shape 2D node. And we're going to make the type or the shape be a circle. And we're just going to expand this, this circle to be the size of the power up. So it completely covers the power up, as you can see. There we go. So that's the basis of our power up. And now let's, of course, attach a script to this called powerup.gd. Say class name power up. It's an area 2D, and we can start from here. Now every power-up is going to be scrolling straight down the screen. Now you can of course make that more complex and have power-ups go slower or faster or take different paths across the screen, but for this tutorial series, we're just going to have power-ups move straight down. 
So let's create an export variable called power up move speed. It'll be a float, and let's just set that to 50. I don't know. We might have to change that later, of course. And all we want to do is move this entire power up node down the screen every frame by that speed. So we can go ahead and create a physics process function. And inside of that, we're just going to take our position. And we're going to add to the y coordinate of our position, because that will mean we're moving down if we add to it the power up move speed variable that we created times delta. This is all very similar to what we've done in the past. So that will move the power up down the screen every frame. Next, we have to detect when the player actually enters the area of this power up, when it actually enters this collision shape. That, because when it does, that means we need to collect the power up and actually apply the power up to the player. So let's go ahead and click on the area 2D power up. We'll go to node, and we will connect the area entered event to our script. And we have on power up area entered. Now, if anything enters the area of a power up, we don't care unless it is the player. So we'll say if area is player, so if the area is the player, if the type of it is player, then we know that we can collect this power up. So first things first, we want to make this power up disappear. We want to make it destroyed. So we're going to queue free ourselves. This way the power up gets removed from the scene. But before we do that, we actually have to apply the power up to the player. So we'll say apply power up. And we'll pass along the player, which in this case we know it's the player because we just have this if check here. So area must be the player. So we'll pass that in as a parameter. Now, where is this apply power up function? Well, we have to create it. So let's go ahead and create a function called apply power up, which will take in a player as a parameter. And it's just going to do nothing for right now because this is the base power up class, so there's nothing to do. Okay. We're almost done here for the power up base class, but there is one thing. If the power up is scrolling down the screen, and it goes off the screen without being collected, we need to destroy this entire node. That way it doesn't stay in memory. Of course, we already know how to do this using visibility notifier 2D because the enemies are the same thing. When they go off screen, we destroy the enemy, as you can see. When they exit screen, we queue free. Let's do the exact same thing in the power up script. So in the power up scene, we'll add a new uh, visibility notifier 2D. And we'll just expand that area to cover the entire power up. Again, visibility notifier 2D doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it covers the entire power up. And of course, we'll click on that node, go to the node tab, and we want to listen for when it exits the screen, so screen exited. And we will attach to that signal into our script here. So whenever we exit the screen, we need to make sure we just queue free ourselves. We need to remove ourselves from the tree because we're off screen, the player can't collect us anymore. Great. That's it for the power up base class. But of course, this does absolutely nothing right now. So let's go ahead and create the shield power up. We're going to create a new inherited scene. We're going to inherit from our power up scene that we just created. As you can see, we're now in an inherited scene. You can see we can't edit or we can't change these sprites here. They're grayed out. And we're going to rename this to shield power up. So and we'll go ahead and save this as a new scene. And here you can modify the sprite to be whatever power up icon that you need. In our case, it's already the shield icon, so I don't have to change anything. But of course, you could just change the region here for every different power up. We'll do that when we get another power up, of course, into the game. Uh, but other than that, we don't have to do anything to this power up unless we wanted it to move at a different speed. OK, so. If we click the script icon next to shield power up, you'll notice it just takes us to the power up script. But we need to actually implement apply power up for the shield power up. In fact, let me just make a comment here in the power up script. This needs to be implemented by the inheriting class. Just a little note for people. So we're going to click shield power up. We're going to disconnect the script and reconnect a new script called shield power up .gd. And we'll just make this extend our power up script. 
So it's just going to contain all this code, but we need to implement apply power up. So I'll copy that function and I'll paste it in shield power up .gd. And here we can actually run code to apply the shield to the player. Of course, we already know how to do that. Player .apply shield for some amount of time. In fact, let's create an export variable for the shield power up called shield time. And I don't know, let's give a shield to the player for six seconds. I think that's long enough. We'll pass along shield time to apply shield. That should be all we need to create a shield power up. So when the player enters any power up area, if it is the player, we call apply power up, which of course is going to call the, the inheriting classes version of apply power up here, which will apply the shield in the case of the shield power up to the player. Now, if you want, you can push an error here uh, in the base power up class. That way you can catch errors uh, earlier, but I'm just going to leave the comment for now. Okay, let's test this out really quick before I drag this on too long. We'll go ahead into our main gameplay scene. We will open up the power ups folder and we will drag an instance of our shield power up scene anywhere into here. And let's just, I don't know, maybe let, let's create a couple of them at different points manually for right now and let's run the game. As you can see the power-ups are moving down. If we collect this one we get a shield and it should stay for like five or six seconds. Six seconds I think I set it to. And then it disappears and I just barely got to collect the last one. As you can see I won't get damaged while the shield is enabled. Now it's off and now I can get damaged and now the damage still applies that like two second one second invincibility shield which I still want to keep as well. So cool things are actually working. And of course, we can verify in the scene tree here, uh, in the remote scene inspector, that our shield power-ups are completely gone because, of course, we collected them. And if we run this again, we can check that once one of them goes off the screen, you can see them here. Once they leave the screen, they should be deleted from this. And as you can see, one of them just removed, and both of them are now gone. So we know our visibility notifier is working correctly as well. That's all for this episode, everyone. In the next episode, we're going to learn how to actually spawn these power-ups similar to spotting enemies. And then after that, we'll add a different type of power-up. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.